You doing? How you feeling? I'm your host, Tony Miller, and welcome to Labor Pains. After 15 years in hotels, I was fired for helping a group of hotel workers organize. I started out as an overnight front desk clerk and worked my way up to the executive committee of the largest hotel ownership group in Virginia with a lot of fun stops along the way, including at Hilton Corporate. I know the difference between good owners and bad owners, and at Labor Pains, we think you deserve to know the truth about both of them. We hope you enjoy the show. Today, we chat with Yvette Avery, a UPS driver and a member of the Teamsters International. She's the treasurer of their LGBTQ plus caucus as well, and has been a Teamster for over 15 years. I love chatting with her and hearing about how the union helped her earn free health benefits and strong wages. Yvette also serves as the shop steward, so whenever there's trouble at work, Yvette gets to sit in with employees so that HR, the GMs, the managers, and the owners can't railroad them. How cool is that? All because they're Teamsters. I hope you enjoy our chat with Yvette. Okay, my name is Yvette Avery out of Atlanta, Georgia. Um, with the Teamsters, I'm a union steward out of Local 728, uh, also a UPS driver. I'm currently the Teamsters LGBTQ plus caucus treasurer as well. How long have you been a Teamster? How long have you been in a union? So I've been a Teamster for about 15 years, been with UPS about 17. So oftentimes in those workplaces where there's not an event saying, hey, the union is the right thing for us, um, the bosses intimidate, they scare, they make up lies about unions. They, they, what, what are some of the lies, you know, what are some of the things that you know happens when people start talking about unions? Well, the the companies love to say, oh, well, that's a third party that's coming in and try to tell you what to do. Uh, no, the union is us. The members make the union. So getting that uh, through to people who are non-union, letting them know, no, you run the union. You are the ones who actually make the decisions as to who your leadership will be, how, what your contract is going to have in it, because you get to vote on things. So it makes you very powerful if you have the union. Right now, you know, in these companies, you have no say so if they say hey this is what we're going to do that's what you're going to do if you fight against it they can send you out the door so just having um at those non-union jobs they tried that union busted technique they throw out fires they had videos planned just saying all these things that the company does for you we're a family we open door policy come talk to us you can get it whatever you need and yet and still no it doesn't happen no you can't get that raise well you may give you one but yet and still y'all making several billions of dollars of profits off the backs of these people, but not sharing the wealth, you know, with the people. I've never, I love that you mentioned that line of we're a family. My old boss used to tell that bullshit all the time. Like, that's interesting because in my family, my grandma would never let one of her grandkids go hungry and like not eat food. Right. Or in a hot tin can truck in Atlanta in the summer with no AC. Doesn't sound like any family I'm in. No. If it is, it sounds like you can get the hell out of there. Exactly. Your family would not allow you to, you know, if somebody shot you today, oh, can you finish the route? Uh, somebody can't. No. Would you do that to your mom, your sister, your dad? I, I look at them and say, are you kidding me? Like, you know, the companies, just, they look at you as a number and that is it, but they will claim family every chance they get, but it is not the truth. And we can see it every day. Sounds to me like the union and the teams are a lot more of a family than any company ever is, right? Definitely. Those are my brothers and sisters in the fight. It doesn't matter what union you're with. If you have something going on, we're going to show up. And we're going to stand in solidarity with you. And that's what it's all about. Just want everybody to understand that we as workers have the power. So if you have any issues at work, if you have people that are going through similar things and you may not be unionized, reach out, do some research, check on a union in your area. We would love to welcome you to the Teamsters, but it's whatever you know, your uh, unions are, reach out to them, ask them about organizing, get your people organized because now COVID helped a lot of us see that workers really hold the power without this, the world can't run. So we hold the power, utilize it, stand together and stand strong. Yvette, I love that. Nobody <laughs> cares about somebody that's a senior director of marketing and brand collaborations no. in some fucking company. That person, no, no. they're lovely, I'm sure they're great but they don't do anything for my life. Do you know what matters exactly. in my life? When I hit the button order, a worker, a, a Teamster driver, puts their ass on the line in a non-air conditioned tin can and gets me whatever stupid thing I feel like I deserve that day, right? 
Okay, like, damn right. We're going to break it to you. <laughs> that's what matters. Union workers are the people that do the work that rich people want. That's it. So that's right true. about that. Rich people, I don't need some fucker with an MBA selling me some product online or doing some financial service. It doesn't make my life different. But the person right. who pours my wine, you know, makes my hamburger up at the restaurant, the person who drives the package to me, the person who bags my groceries in the grocery store, those mm -hmm. are the people that make my life different. Those are the people that matter, and unions yeah. support them. Damn right. Damn right. How did your compensation benefits kind of your quality of life change? after you became a full-fledged dues-paying teamster? Well, being that, of course, I was in a, we're in a right-to-work state here mm -hmm. in uh, Georgia, I still got everything from day one, you know, so I still had all my medical, dental, and vision benefits that were free because of the teamster, so everything negotiated. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. They were, how much did you pay? Free, nothing. We pay nothing for our medical, dental, and vision. We pay nothing, no. Okay, and yeah. that was 15 years ago? Right, it's been like that for I think ever. <laughs> so as far as I know, they hadn't had to pay for their benefits. So that's wow. something that. So, so you're saying when you need to go see a doctor. No, but does that include, I didn't ask you, but do you have a family that you take care of or any family? Well, the kids are grown now, but yeah, it's my wife and I at this point. But yeah, we, the kids are grown, so we don't have to worry about that. But even when the kids were on the benefits, it's still no cost to us coming out of our checks every week. How has that made your quality of life or working life better? What would you say? Uh, definitely has made it a lot less stressful. A lot of people, especially when it comes to medical uh, issues, can go bankrupt because of not having the proper coverage. So that in itself is just a blessing to have. So I know at any time if I'm, I'm not feeling well, something happens, I can go to the doctor because I'm covered. You know, uh, so that's something that is priceless. Uh, a lot of people in there, you know, young people may not realize how much of a benefit it is because they think, oh, we're young, we're, you know, we don't get sick, you know, whatever. But COVID kind of helped put that in perspective. So a lot of people understand now at this point that, you know, having health care benefits um, that you don't pay for is, is a definite blessing. So it has definitely been great because, of course, throughout the years, surgeries have had to happen. Things have had to happen. And we don't have to worry about, you know, getting a huge bill. Yes. So. It definitely helped. And that's just when I was working part time, mind you. So whether you're part time or full time, the Teamsters have negotiated that we have free benefits. So it does not matter if you're part time or full time. It's just unheard of. Unbelievable. And and so, you know, benefits, certainly that's always top of mind. Has the union been or played a factor in making sure that you get paid a wage or the, an amount of money that you feel is better than maybe other jobs in Atlanta that are non-union that you maybe have friends or family that are a part of? Of course, every year we had a contractual raise. So you know exactly what your check's going to look like. You know exactly what's coming to you because it's all right there in black and white. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the blessing in itself. At a non-union job, you have no idea when you're getting a raise, if you're going to get a raise ever. They yeah. just decide whenever they arbitrarily want to do it. So having that contract was very, 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 I'm like amazing because you knew exactly what you were going to get when you were going to get it and that everybody else that started when you started got the same wage so it's equality in your wages and and it's the same true for full-time people do you are they getting you know stronger wages in the Atlanta area or the area you're in than maybe other jobs that would be full-time right so the full-timers do have a competitive wage so in with the comparison to other people uh it's a great wage uh for you know, one of the things like I noticed in in my hotel sector when I was doing a little bit of research in, in the Richmond and really the Virginia area, Richmond doesn't have um, a pres a union presence in the hotels uh, yet. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully they do. Um, okay. so I had to look at maybe like northern Virginia or uh, Williamsburg, which is kind of south of Richmond towards the water. But I noticed that just at, at the hotels in northern Virginia near D.C., you know, the housekeeping wage there, I mean, they could be making $17 an hour, $18 an hour, whereas in Richmond, they're lucky to make $13 an hour. And that's because those other mm -hmm. hotels were union, right? Right. Uh, and so that makes a big difference when you have uh, maybe a labor union, you know, like a Teamsters that's negotiating uh, on, on your behalf. What are some of the other positives that you've encountered in your 15 years with being a Teamster? You know, what what other ways do you feel like they kind of try to fight for you or make your life better? Well, for me, uh, I've been witness and privy to a lot of victories when it comes to people having a fight, you know, 
through the use of their contract. Because without it, you know, like saying the right to work state, you could lose your job because maybe you, you have a medical condition that keeps you from having to, you know, you can come to work certain times. So we have those FMLA protections in our contract. We have, you know, short term disability. We have stuff that within the contract to help save your job because it's hard, you know, you know, when you can go through things or have some issues, there's something there for everybody. And that's something that has been, uh, like I said, something I see those victories where people think, oh, I'm going to have to quit because I can't do X, Y, Z. I'm like, no, 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 we have this. So just a little education on the contract has helped people throughout my years learn how to maneuver through this job, having a contract versus thinking, oh, if I can't do this or if I got to be out next week, I'm going to lose my job. No, yeah. if you have this going on, then, hey, apply for this, do this, you know, and so it's been, like I say, victory after victory the people being able to you know provide for their family still and keep their jobs and stay there you know as long as they would like because they now know that there's things that the teams has negotiated in that contract that they may have never thought of that existed just because you know they didn't know because everybody's not going to pick up the contract and just read it you know from page to page oh. uh, so we at least try to encourage people to get very familiar with the things that apply to your job you know that really affect you so um, a lot of people just didn't know for the lack of knowledge. But now those victories are great. You can pass along those stories. It helps somebody else in the future. And so that's the way you help build, you know, the empowerment of the people within the union. I love that. And, you know, you mentioned earlier that you're a shop steward. Is that right? Correct. So can, you, can you tell people that might be listening that, you know, they've never been in a union workplace, so they really don't know what that role is. Can you tell tell them a little bit more about that and what that means to you to be in that role? Right. So basically being a steward, I help to enforce the contract. So I make sure that the employees and management are on the same page when it comes to, you know, what our contract states and their rights. So never letting somebody be taken advantage of, always being there to Are you saying them. that sometimes the managers and owners try to cheat people that are working? Are you telling me that happens? On a daily basis. Unfortunately, what? it is super common. Even with a contract, you have to constantly fight the company to make sure that they are following the rules. So they will try not to if they can. So that's the main goal is for me to make sure that they're following that contract. So the employees bring it to me, whatever issues they have. And I help them through the grievance process to, you know, take care of it. So that's the main goal. And it's been, like I say, very helpful for me throughout the years. I started out, like I said, as a part-timer my first 14 years, then full-time this past three years as a driver and have gotten so much like I have a great appreciation for drivers now, more so than I ever knew because of the things that they face out here on the road. So um it's been like what? Give, give me some of those things that you've learned okay. from being a driver i love that well being a driver can be very dangerous uh never really understood you know how when we're just approaching people's houses to deliver packages we don't know what we are uh, coming upon we could be coming upon a domestic dispute we could be coming upon anything and people are, you know very happy with you know weapons and stuff these days so you never know if we surprise them in the wrong way uh it might be you know the end i did start a petition not too long ago on the safety of drivers because we have had drivers you know shot at uh and you know what hit and killed yes we have let had me all assure that. you of something the people in boardrooms that make millions of dollars a year no one's fucking shooting at them right no no not while they're just trying to do their job and right. we're just out here working so i you know try to shine some light on that and help people to understand that we can spend you know stand up together uh, using our collective voice as a union to get some changes made because it's it's something that needs to be addressed. So yeah, it's um definitely been like I say an eye opener. I definitely respect the drivers more and understand that the the job is very hard. You know they're dealing some adverse con you know conditions on that truck. Thank goodness we won some stuff for the next contract, even though we hadn't completed it. We will get that air conditioning to get some reprieve because it's very very unsafe and hot in the back of those trucks. So um, I was shocked. The trucks don't have AC. Is that correct? No, nothing. That's crazy, right? Like that's insane. No. Nobody fucking gives a shit when they want. They get on Amazon Prime and they're like, "I need my salad tong." I mean, I ordered. I, you, right. you make fun of me because I ordered salad scissors the other day on Prime, and it's like, shame on me, right? Like, do I really need salad scissors in forty-eight hours? No, like I don't. <laughs> 
And does, is it really that fair that I'm, someone's like driving to me to give me my stupid salad scissors and they're not in air conditioning? That's insane, right? Right. And I just don't, I don't blame the customer because hey, I have to order a lot of stuff because I live in the truck, basically. I'm always there. So the problem is, it's the company. The company is aware. Like you say, they sit in their air conditioned offices and they're, you know, they're good. But we're let, me, let me ask you, and I think you know the answer to this, but some people, again, if they don't know the union space, they don't know how strong, if, if Teamsters were not there, if this were just Yvette and friends fight, do you think you'd even be able to get to this point where you're trying to fight and, and have a battle? Oh, no. Without the union, we would be, uh, I would hate to see, it would be horrible. Like I say, the, the treatment with a union is like a tough fight. Because yeah. UPS is just a you know a horrible company when it comes to trying to harass people. So yeah. without the union and not having the recourse and just nobody there to stand for you and they can just arbitrarily send you out the door and fire you without going through a process just because I don't like you or whatever. I mean you don't have yeah. to give anything in a right to work state. So right. without the union, oh my god, I wouldn't even work for UPS honestly. Yeah. Without the union, I wouldn't be here for sure. I, I you know one. One of the things that you kind of mentioned a few times, and I, I understand from the, you know, I grew up in a union household, but kind of like you, my dad was union, but he didn't, honestly, he didn't like this union very much because right. he didn't understand it, to be very honest. Right. Now that right. I'm a little, you know, now that I'm 36 years old, I'm like, no doofus, like you get a pension that pays you over a hundred grand a year because mm. you were in a union. Like if you would, right. you would not know how to do that, right? Like there's no way exactly. most people would know how to take money, you know, use money and manage money like that. To live like that going on like that union is the reason you could retire but yeah. you know sometimes in union households especially in the old days you know 50 60 years ago they didn't understand it because like you said people had fought way beforehand and mm -hmm. made it so that when the time that like my dad joined his union things had already been fought out a lot of it mm -hmm. a lot of the work had been done and you know he kind of got to reap the benefits of that but one of the things you mentioned and i think is really important is like even in a right to work state, so I'm in Virginia right now, terrible right to work state, right? I mean, I used to be the manager, uh, you know, I used to work right for the ownership and I mean, we would, they can people left and right if they didn't like the way that they look. I mean, true story, right? right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, they put up with this because I'm a pretty strong willed person and they don't want to deal with, you know, my, my buddies from this college over here if, okay. if they fuck with me, right? And, but I, that that's me, I'm special. But like a normal day to day person that's working front mm -hmm. desk or housekeeping like I used to work with, like if they thought that they were too black or too gay or too brown or too, you know, Hispanic, they'd be like, yeah, she didn't show up for work, guys. She's not that good. Go ahead and get rid of her, right? Mm -hmm. So can you talk about how like the union really helps fight for people when it comes to keeping their job stable? I'm sure you have a million times you've, you've gotten to see that. Yeah, I've definitely seen it uh, more times than I can count. But yeah, it's basically um, they can't arbitrarily fire you. So we have what we call progressive discipline so they have to go through a process and step so they have to you know go through writing you up several times for the same offense but of course we have the grievance process so sometimes we can get those write-ups thrown out because yeah. sometimes they're just made up or you know because of treatment i'm going to treat this employee one way and show favoritism over here no you have to do it correctly across the board or we're going to throw that out we're getting rid of it so we have those opportunities to stand in and step in now, of course, with, as with any other job, something you can be fired for it. Sure. Because if you're stealing, okay, we can't save you if they got, and they can prove it now. They have to be able to prove it now. But uh -huh, if they, yeah. They have, yeah, if you're stealing and they, they can prove it, then, of course, there's something that, you know, they yeah. have stuff that they can just arbitrarily fire you for, but that's what we call. Here's my thought um, about stealing, Yvette. People only steal because they're forced to in life. I've never yeah. seen, you know, I've never seen right. anybody steal because they got plenty of extra money to go fucking blow, right? Like, yeah. of course, it's because of yeah the circumstance. They have absolutely, of course. But I hear you about that. Yeah, it's but one of the things that I think people with, without being in a union don't understand is that when something bad happens at work, or you feel like someone's maybe coming at you, especially if it's your boss, um, mm -hmm. but if it's somebody else, you know, if you're like in a normal place like where I worked for 15 years, you don't really have anybody to go to, right? Like. If your mm -hmm. boss is giving you trouble because they don't like your skin color, they don't like the way you look, or they don't like the way you sound, right? Who are you mm -hmm. going to go to, right? Like, and if the union, they have somebody like you, right? Right. So, yeah, well, they call their attorney. So, look, I show up. So, you don't have to speak to management. You don't have to deal with management unless a steward is present. 
So that's your rights. You have wine garden rights that as long as they want to talk to you, they may lead to discipline with anything. Um, you need to have your steward present. So you don't have to even talk to them without us, which is so a, a great thing. You're because you're and that wouldn't happen if you guys weren't union and, and you weren't Teamsters, right? Oh, I be really clear about that. Very clear. You'll be in there alone by yourself like I was when I worked for the non-union company and was yeah. terminated. I was sitting in there alone, no representation. Just yeah. the company and all their people telling me what they're going to say and what they're going to do and put me out the door. So, yeah, it, it's definitely a different situation. If you don't have a union, you do not have that person right beside you the whole time having your back. I mean, there are so many times in my job I was forced to, like, by my owners, because they don't like to do it. They send people like me. They pay me a lot of money. They're like, hey, go get these shoes in your BMW. And then, no, oh, by the way, make sure all the black and brown people are fucking taken care of, right? Like, that's right. basically the deal. And I, you know, I did that for a long time. So I'm guilty as charged. But um, you, you're you right. Like, that's what happens not in unions, right? You corner mm -hmm. people in a room. Usually there's a people that are not as privileged or the benefits that you do. And it can right. be as many managers as you want, right? I can bring me in. I can yeah. bring my HR lady in. I can bring one of my GMs in. And we can sit around in this closed office and we can intimidate any kind of woman, black, brown, Latin person and be like, well, what? And we railroad them and then they're gone, right? Exactly how it happens, exactly how it happens. But because I was a union activist, you know, they came after me. So sure. the thing is, you know, you, having that union is priceless. You have to have somebody that knows you, you know, has your back and you know that no matter what you're going in there, not alone, you're not fighting alone. And, you you know, it's nothing like it. It's definitely nothing like it. I love it. that. What would you, and, and Yvette, I know I've already taken a little bit more of your time than you, you have, but I, I got maybe one one or two more things for you, and I'll, I promise I'll let you go. I just, I love hearing that because your experience as the shop steward, I think it's so important that literally you have the right to go and sit in with somebody else when they're getting, you know, intimidated by the manager or the boss, mm -hmm. and you can go in and be like, nope, here's what we've got in our contract, we're going to protect you, and this ain't this conversation ain't over, so, you okay. know. You, exactly. You've given that power to you, you. You're helping somebody else with that power, and I love that so much. Mm. One a question I have for you is, you know, you've talked a lot about all the wonderful experiences you've had that the Teamsters have helped given you. One of the things you know about non-union workplaces that have been non-union forever, right, is once people start talking union or like the experience you had at the Delta, right? Mm -hmm. You know things start to happen at that point, and you're brave. You're a brave person. I can tell you. You, you said, I, "I'll just get out my recorder, and I'm going to record these sons of bitches," and that's that. But a lot yeah, of people aren't that brave, right? A lot of people mm -hmm. don't. They just don't have the spirit that that takes, and that's okay, right? That, that, that don't mean they're a bad person. It just means that right. people like Tony and Yvette are just we got we got a little bit more, uh, you know, fire. That's all right. That's all. And it sounds like these days they're doing a better job at the higher level of trying to support that. And I really oh, I think that's awesome that they're willing to make that change along uh, with the rest of the, 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 the Teamster family, right? Correct. Yeah, we've never had the support that we do now under the new administration. So that's definitely a blessing to have the you know international have your back. Because normal people need to know that like when they have things happen in their life, like what happened? if their mom mm -hmm. and dad get sick or the kids get sick, like it's OK. Like. Take right. work. It's going to be fine because the union going to have your back, right? Like right. management's allowed to cut out anytime they want. I right. don't have to show up to work if I don't feel like it. If I have something I got to do, I just send an email like, sorry, I'll take care of it from my phone and my computer. Like, right. okay, whatever. Exactly. So I got that privilege and people that are working people, people who mm -hmm. labor, they don't unless they're in a union, right? Cool. Yeah. So I, I just think like anybody that can share those stories. So whether you know, even if it's other folks at, at, at your local or other people within the Teamsters, please uh, connect them to me. OK, I, I want to hear and share these stories. It's just they're so important and they're so special. Um, yeah. And I, and I appreciate it. A powerful way of making sure people understand like their day to day benefits to being in a union. Like this really is the real deal. Right. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, wow. Free benefits for her spouse and kids. That's amazing. A shop steward who can sit in with you when things get tough at work and the owners are trying to force you out or cheat you, that's fucking cool. Yvette, thank you so much for chatting with us and sharing your powerful stories. I think we all learned just how much a union can help you with your everyday life. We hope you enjoyed the show today. And remember, you have far more power than you think you do. When I was a junior in college, I had the opportunity to visit a sister college of ours. 
home of the best business school in the world, according to many folks who definitely do not labor. In fact, both the cowardly CEO who fired me for helping workers organize and your favorite president of all time, you know, the dude with the hair like mine, both went there. A guest speaker an executive at one of the most powerful investment banks in all of New York City, taught us something that I would never forget about solidarity. You see, this is you, and this is the boss. Hmm. This is your friend versus the boss. Done. But when you stand together, you are unbreakable and unstoppable. Your time is now, and if you need help getting organized or want to share your story about labor, go to labor.gay and click on connect with us. We will get back to you ASAP, and we can help you get organized to build the future you deserve. Thank you again for watching Labor Pains. I'm Tony Miller, wishing you love and solidarity.